grand final of the Vodacom URC. The Vodacom Bulls site that will take on Glasgow Warriors is as follows. Karat Stjernakamp at one, Johan Hobla at two, Wilkolo at three, Juan Vermark at four, Rodan Kia captains the side at five, Marco van Staden at six, Aldo Klo at seven, Cameron Hanekom at eight, at the back, Ambrose Papier at nine, Johan Hosin at 10, Ketli RSL returns at 11, Harold Forster and David Krill at 12 and 13, respectively, with Sergio Peterson on the right, and Devin Williams at full back. The impact squad sees Aka van der Bebe at 16, Simpua Matanzan at 17, Francois Kloppa at 18, Renard Ludwig at 19, Mizanka at 20, Zach Berger comes into the squad at 21, and Chris Smith and Connell Smith form 22 and 23, respectively. MW, you happy? The only yeah. two changes is Ketley yep. at 11 and Zach Berger at 21. Cool. Um, Anemi? Actually, not yet today. Oh. Hi, I'm online. <laughs> yeah, disappointed you couldn't make it to the person, Anemi? I'm sorry, it's just a hectic week this week. Um, Jake, yes, first of all, it's it's a big, big day, uh, big weekend. You've been there, you've done that. I mean, you've you've had some very big games in your life. What is your message to your players? And you do have senior players there with lots of experience, but it's also a team filled with very young players. What What is your yeah. message to them? And I mean, the most important message for me was let's just do what we did last week. I mean, that's, uh, you know, there's no more they can do. I think last week they showed when they played and the way they played um, and the things they did were good enough to beat a team like Leinster um, that have been in three European Cup finals. So, yeah, there's no secret remedy. Um, it's a final. You just got to do the things that you've been doing well, you know, and especially what you did last week. I mean, for me, that was outstanding. Um, yeah, I know I've had, I mean, we got interesting, we've had lots of guys come in, Bucky's brought just come in, had a chat to them, Bucky's has won European Cup, three times Super Rugby, French Championships, Tri-Nations, British Irish Lions, and when you talk to all of them, Tace Lawrence was here today, Tace Lawrence won, I think, seven out of eight Curry Cups as a captain, um, and the message is always the same, I mean, just do the things you do well. Um, the rest of the the rest of the game will look after itself. So, yeah, I, I think it's, that's basically what I'm going to try and push the the next 24 hours. Is we just got to do what we do well, what we've done well the whole year, um, and that'll and that'll be enough. That'll be enough. And I'm not saying that'll be enough for me. That's enough because I think then everyone will understand that we that we've given it a good a good go. Yeah. Um, just looking at the at the injuries, um, how is Vili doing? And just um, yeah, Kurtley as well. Um, yeah, so Vili, Vili. I mean, it's I think in the old days, and I know those were the the old 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 days. Probably the doctor would have asked, "Can you see my three fingers?" And he would have said yes, and he would have been available to play. But you can imagine now with protocols and and you know, and obviously concussion and and the fear of head injuries, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which I I understand. Um, there's no ways we could we can fast track anything. You know, he failed his HIA. There's an obligatory time that you have to be off. He wants to play. He keeps saying that he thinks he's fine. But you know, again, that's that's a great sign for where we are as a group because everyone wants to be part of this final. Um, and Kurtley, you know, Anton Dupont, he had a cheek fracture. Played in the quarterfinal of a World Cup against South Africa. Um, you know, doctor was impressed and and really happy with how Kirtley has has recovered. I mean, obviously, you can't target anyone's head, and you can't. Uh, you know, it's actually illegal to play a guy around his head anyway. So, you know, there's no fear of of anything other than the fact that he he wants to be part of it. Doctor says he's happy. Specialist says he's happy. Um, and to have him back, especially because we, we lose a guy like Billy's experience is fantastic for us. Thanks, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, and good luck for this weekend. Thank you, thank you. Stuart Bartgate. Thanks, Muna. Hi, Jake. Just following up on what you said about let's just do what we did last week. 
which is totally understandable given how well your team played. Do you expect Glasgow to offer a different kind of challenge in any way? Will you have to vary your game at all? Um, look, I mean, uh, it's a difficult one to answer because I think what's worked for Glasgow is the things they've done well this year have worked for them. I'm not sure whether we play the same as they have the whole year in a final. Again, I, it's not for me to decide what they're going to do, but I mean, them them attacking like they do, using the pace of what they have. They, you know, I'm talking about pace of the ball, pace of the of the breakdown. Um, it's something that they've got they've got a lot of gain out of it. I mean, that's why they have been a successful team as they are. Um, you know, whether they're going to change that based on the fact it's altitude, whether they're going to change that based on the fact that it's no need to score four tries anymore. Remember last time they came here, four tries and bonus points, et cetera, et cetera, were were important because they wanted to finish top of the log. Um, so I, I look, as I said, it's very difficult for me to think what they're going to do. And that's why I, I said what I said. What I would like us to do is do what we did well. What, what I'd like us to do is do the things we can control um, and the things that I think that are important for us to, to win the game is that we focus on ourselves. I don't think we can spend too much time on worrying about what other teams, you know, especially what Glasgow are going to do on the weekend, whether they play the same or don't play the same. You mentioned that game last month. We've asked your players all week about any relevance that game had. What's your take on it? Can, do you take anything from that game or is it totally different, irrelevant now? Well, the one thing we did take away from that game is that we 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 probably had our foot on their throats. We dropped the ball. We could have been 40 points up. Um, I don't know if you remember, David Creel went through a hole in the 22, tried to offload, ball went to the ground. If we scored there, we would have been on 40 points. And I think what we then realised is that Glasgow don't go away. So I think what, you know, and sometimes as a coach and as a group of players, when you when you allow them to come back like that, it's probably a good thing for us because we we will never go into this game underestimating the fact that it, you know that 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 should be one sided. Um, but you know, I suppose hand in hand with that, it's a completely different fixture altogether. As I said, they needed four tries. You know, there was a lot of talk. I'm, I'm reminding you of that. Remember that game and they needed to beat the Lions or get one point or you know, get two wins. I can't remember what the permutations were, but they needed to get as many points as they could to finish first on the log. Um, and therefore, their mindset would have been completely different as it is in a final, I, I would think. Um, so you know, the, the takeouts will be that we won't underestimate them. The takeouts will be that even though we were on top of them for a long period of time, we still had to work hard to finish off that game. And I think that is... You know, that is something which is also going to be good for us as a group because we won't be going in there thinking, you know, that it's, as I said, that it's going to be one-sided. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Scott. James Petit. James? Okay. Graham Bean? Hi, hi Jake. Um, there's a, a strong South African influence in, in Scottish rugby now. I just wondered, do you see that in the Glasgow team? Do you see that sort of DNA coming through in the way they play? Um, I probably see more South African DNA in the Edinburgh team. Um, and I don't say that with any disrespect. I think that, you know, with the, with the way that Edinburgh play with Fiat and and Skuman and, and those sort of players, I think that there's there's more of a South African DNA in the Edinburgh team. The one thing that I, I do think that Glasgow do uh, differently and and as well as 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 well differently, but at times as well as Edinburgh, is they they play very close to the way that Gregor wants to play for Scotland. Um, and, and I've said it many times. I mean, they have two professional sides. They have the least amount of registered rugby players playing in the World Cup. Uh, and yet they're competitive like they are. And the reason for that is because sometimes the fact that they don't have so many options to pick means they have a closer knit group. The fact that they both play on 4G pitches now, uh, the fact that they, you know, most of them are always or or, or always or sometimes involved in the national setup, which means the thinking is the same. Um, I've said it many times to when Mark Dodson was there, CEO, 
you know, the one thing that they do do well is they the players can play the same whether they wear Scottish jersey or a, or a provincial jersey. And so it is, I mean, I think it's a great mixture. I think there's a lot of DNA, South African DNA. Not that there isn't, you know, we've got Franco and Carl Stein obviously involved. And now you've got Henko Fento who's also come in. Um, but I would think the DNA of South Africa and the way they play would be probably closer linked to the Edinburgh style. But it's quite nice because when they blend together, they 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 have a successful Scottish team that can basically, you know, pull on the pull on the the skills of Duan van Ameva and you know Skuman and you know those kind of players, and then they can also fall back on on the skill sets of a lot of the Scottish players that are playing for the Scottish national team. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Graham McPherson. Hi, Jake. How are you? Good, thanks, Graham. Do you accept that your team are, are strong favourites to, to win tomorrow? And uh, if we're Glasgow to beat you, it would uh, be a major upset? Uh, we were favourites last week against Leinster as well. So uh, it's something that we're getting used to now. You know, last week we got told we were favourites. So I think those days of, of everyone thinking we're underdogs, you know, it's... Uh, Favourites count for nothing. As I said to you last week, people told me that uh, Leinster should be underdogs. Um, but I don't get involved in that. Um, you know, Munster, Munster and Leinster are two incredible sides and Glasgow and the Bulls beat them last weekend. So there should be no reason why. I think the one thing about URC, which has been fantastic uh, since it started, is there's been no guarantee that just because you have certain amount of players or because you ranked... Uh, higher or because you you know you you you're seen by the media as the favorites that there's necessarily a given that you should win the game so i'm not going to give you a headline story that says uh you know i've said to you that we're the favorites and and there's no chance that glasgow can win I, i'm fully aware of the fact that glasgow played really well last week against munster in munster not many teams have beaten munster uh, not even at in Munster, but even anyway, anywhere. I mean, Munster last year won, won, I think they won 11 games this year on a row as well. And last year they won about nine in a row to win the competition. So to go and do what, what Glasgow did last week, um, I'd probably make them favourites. I was just going to ask you, did, did you learn anything new about Glasgow from what you saw last weekend against Munster? Uh, yeah, I just, I suppose... I don't want to say no, because I think what I did learn is it just reinforced what, I, what I've been thinking is that Glasgow are good enough to win. Um, they're good enough to beat anybody. You know, they, they came here and they, they played really well against us. Uh, they beat Leinster in the first game of this competition. And I know it was out without World Cup players, but still, I mean, Glasgow players have gone along and, and beaten Leinster, which is a massive. Now they've gone and beaten Munster. Um, yeah, so I don't think I learned anything. All I did is reaffirmed that I, that Glasgow are, are a good team, well coached, got a lot of good players, um, play a certain style that suits them, um, and are a difficult team to break down. I mean, they were you know, they scored they scored an eighty five meter try on the weekend against Munster. I mean, that's not that's not you know considering they more more than any other team in this competition. Uh, and then they go and score an 85 meter try. It tells you that, you know, that they've got more than one string to their bow. Thanks, coach. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Can we take uh, David Barnes? And then after David Barnes, uh, James, you can wrap it up for the online session. Thank you. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm, the, Sc the other Scottish guys have asked all the questions we need. Thank you. All right. Okay. Cool. James? Have you ever been to Loftus when it's been sold out? Okay, so why do you ask me a question like that? Well, I got a, I, I got a, I got a, I got a stat here that the last time it was sold out is when the Vodacom Bulls played the Brumbies in 2013, which is 11 years ago. And I'm so chuffed because that's the day I was coaching the Brumbies.
Thank you. Thanks so much. We're looking forward to it. I must say, it's, uh, you know, who would have thought, I said it to the boys the other day, who would have thought four years ago with COVID that we'd ever, we'd ever be sitting thinking there's a full house at Loftus. I mean, I remember the final at Cape Town. It was still COVID, and I think they could only have 35,000 people in the lower tier. So it's got to definitely be something that, that is unique. Thank you. Thanks so much, eh? Thank you. Wish you were here, then you'd have one more. <laughs>